Reality can be a confusing puzzle. Every day we're confronted by a random array of information, stimuli, and experiences. We come in contact with people who make all sorts of claims that certain ideas or perspectives of events are true and factual. And sometimes these claims are in direct opposition to one another. So it's often hard to make sense of it all. Because life can be confusing and sometimes even scary, people in every time and in every culture have come up with ways of organizing and making sense of life as they experience it. And there's nothing wrong with doing this. In fact, organizing and interpreting the world around us is what makes life livable. Otherwise, we'd be living like animals, operating by circumstance and instinct. Darwin's survival of the fittest at its best. So if you study the great civilizations and cultures of the past, or if you take time to examine the cultures of different groups of people today, you can figure out at least some of the ways that people organize and experience their lives. There's a label for this way of organizing and interpreting reality, and it's called a worldview. We all need worldviews because they help make sense out of life, and, and that's their purpose. Let's take ourselves for example. Now, I'm going to call the worldview that most of us use Western modernism. By Western, I mean the worldview that generated out of Europe, North America, and other countries in that orbit. By modernism, I mean the view of reality that was generated by the Enlightenment of the 1700s, which rejected the supernatural and the intuitive in favor of rationalism and the scientific method. Of course, I do realize that in the 21st century, we're going through a reaction to modernism right now, known as postmodernism. But I'll set postmodernism aside for another time. Modernism still has a profound influence over how we think and live life in the 21st century. So, as Westerners, we use a specific set of assumptions to make sense of what we experience. We're trained, programmed if you like, to sift the raw data of our experience through a grid made up of four interlocking components. Rationalism, naturalism, mechanism, and anti-supernaturalism. Let's look at each one of these component assumptions. Rationalism is the belief that on its own, the human mind can understand most, if not all, of reality. Now a moment ago, I gave a brief description of the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was a philosophical movement popular in the 1700s. It rejected faith in God as immature and counterproductive to human betterment. Its leaders were outspokenly hostile to organized religion and especially to Christianity, and it urged people to embrace individual control of their lives using reason and science. Sound familiar? If it does, that's because the Enlightenment is still the driving force behind much of our education, government, and popular thinking. Naturalism assumes that nature is all there is. You, you know, nature, the physical universe, galaxies, empty space, the earth, the elements, hard rocks, ocean depths, plants, animals, humans, nature. Naturalism says that there is nothing else, that everything that exists and everything that happens is physical and is connected with this material universe around us. Mechanism is the belief that all events happen through an impersonal, machine-like process. So if nature is all that exists, then everything is the result of some process at work in the physical universe. Think of a chemical reaction. You, you start with a chemical and a beaker, and then you add another chemical, and there's a reaction, and that reaction produces some compound with entirely different properties. Or think of a machine, say a wind turbine. It has blades and gears that are driven by the wind. The blades turn the shaft, which turns the gears, which turns an electrical generator. All natural, all mechanistic. Mechanism says that Anything that exists, anything that is produced, came about through some mechanistic process in the natural world. Anti-supernaturalism flows right out of everything that we've just talked about. If the physical universe is all there is and everything happens through a natural process, then there is no supernatural. There literally is nothing outside the physical universe. So according to Western modernism, 
any talk of the supernatural should be avoided as an outdated and maybe even harmful superstition. Religion should be discouraged, if not outright banned. Prayer is useless since there's no God to hear anything. Miracles don't happen. Anti-supernaturalism takes the wonder out of life since anything that seems amazing or mind-blowing can simply be explained away as a process. A influencing B to produce C, you know, mechanism. So if you were brought up and educated under Western modernism, you probably tend to see the world around you in just the way that I described. These assumptions, and by the way, assumptions cannot be proven one way or the other. These assumptions are like lenses that fit over your eyes and filters that cover your ears, guiding you to certain conclusions. Rationalism, naturalism, mechanism, and anti-supernaturalism influence what we see and don't see, what makes sense and what does not make sense, what we do and what we avoid doing. All right, why is it important for us to understand all of this? Well, first, it's important to understand Western modernism because it is still the dominant worldview in our society. Wouldn't it be important to understand why people around us think and act the way they do? Second, we need to understand Western modernism so that we can have a more complete grasp on reality. Let's be very clear. Western modernism actually limits what we can know and understand. It doesn't give us a better grasp on reality. It offers a poorer view of the world, an incomplete view of reality in many ways. On the other hand, the Bible reveals reality as it actually is. Yes, the physical world does operate by processes. We call these processes natural laws, gravity, entropy, etc. But what people fail to ask is why there even is gravity, entropy, etc. Why there are laws of nature or even why physical matter exists. If there's no God, no supernatural, there should be literally nothing at all. The Bible shows us glimpses of the supernatural realm and explains at least some of the interactions between the natural and the supernatural. It reveals the God who brought both the supernatural and the natural realms into being. If life is going to make any real sense at all, then we need to understand at least a bit about all of the factors involved. Otherwise, it's like trying to put a jigsaw puzzle together with only half the pieces. Another reason why it's vital that we understand Western modernism is so that we can avoid the mistakes of its flawed worldview. As someone raised under Western modernism myself, I know personally how it can influence my thinking, even as a committed Christian. Being aware of what Western modernism is based on helps me avoid its misguided view of life. It gives me the tools to confront the arrogance of those who push it, and it motivates me to help those still limited by it. One of the things that I have realized is that Western modernism creates a kind of spiritual blindness among Christians, and it robs the church of the passion and the energy that we so desperately need to fulfill our calling. Its influence explains why the church is sometimes plateaued and even shrinking in Western culture, while it's growing so rapidly in other parts of the world where Western modernism is not as much of a factor. So as I wrap this up, here are some things to think about. First, if Western modernism is so much better than the Bible, why can't it explain really basic things like the origin of the universe, why the laws of nature work the way that they do, and why people who should have every reason to live comfortable and happy lives still choose to do evil and destructive things? Or, if Western modernism is superior, why aren't people who operate by Western modernism healthier, more content, more well-adjusted, and free from crime than others? If it lives up to its claims, then why aren't we experiencing utopia? And by the way, don't let its followers blame their failures on Christianity as the big obstacle preventing their success. We really haven't been all that troublesome to its progress, and they have pretty much run the show for quite some time now. There should be results to prove their theories, but things have only gotten worse, it seems. Or how about this? When there's a clear conflict between the Bible and Western modernism, 
you know, its tenets of rationalism, naturalism, mechanism, and anti-supernaturalism. Why not trust the Bible? You know, it's been around a lot longer, and it's shown that it can stand the test of time. Okay, that's it for now. This is Dr. Michael Bogart for Aspect Ministries.